Okay, so this is the new XPS 17 for 2021, the 9710. Now, this is, in my opinion, the best looking laptop on the market. I think it looks better than the Razer Blades. I think it looks better than MacBooks. I think it's just a very nice looking machine. And it's not just the giant screen with thin bezels, it's also the exterior design. It's got this nice angular shape that's distinctly XPS, right? It's not like just a clone of Apple's products. It's it's uniquely theirs. The XPS 13, 15, 17, they all have that same kind of boxy polygonal design language. I think it looks really nice. This year, they've improved the performance significantly, but there's still some important issues that we need to talk about. Now I'm gonna start for the screen. So the screen is probably the best part about the XPS 15 and 17. It's got this thin bezel, this really nice aspect ratio that's great for work, and the panels are bright and color accurate, but they're like, the key word here is just how bright they get. Like this isn't even full brightness, I don't think at least. Yeah, like look at that. That's just blown out the camera. It's overexposed because it's just such a bright screen. Obviously you're not cranking it up to full brightness every day, but if you do need to work in an environment where it's like got a lot of windows or you're just working outside, that brightness is awesome. It's really good. However, these are not fast screens. Both the 4K option and the full HD option are only 60 Hertz panels and they have relatively slow response times. If you're playing shooters, like particularly fast paced shooters, you'll see ghosting on the screen. But if you're actually looking at this and considering going with either 4K panel or the full HD panel, I highly, highly recommend the full HD panel. The 4K option is significantly more expensive and the full HD panel is just so good. It's really bright, it's really color accurate, and you're saving on battery life. It's just a better screen to me, even if you're into editing photos and or videos. The webcam is only 720p, it's not a great image. The audio quality is also just okay. The keyboard, I'm just gonna talk about this real quickly because it hasn't changed from the previous generation. It's a nice keyboard, really nice layout. It's something that I personally really like. I do think for some people they won't like the small up and down arrows. It's just some that they've gone for in terms of a design choice. And same with the lack of a number pad. I personally love the fact that it doesn't have a number pad, but I feel like for the handful of people out there that require it for work, you're just gonna have to have an external. But keyboard is on point. Also, the material that they've used, like the resin coating that they've put on top of the carbon fiber is so much better than the materials they used a few years ago. This stuff is less sticky and gummy. It doesn't hold fingerprints as much, but most importantly, just ages better. After a year, my the XPS 17 from last year feels almost identical to a brand new one, which is unlike what they've had with the resins in the past. So I like this resin a lot more. Now, the trackpad. Last year's XPS 17, I had a engineering sample that was perfect. Then I had two retail units that had issues. They had these weird clicks and basically loose internals where there would just be like a rattle in the trackpad. And this was not uncommon. If you looked on the internet and just the number of emails that I got about this from people that purchased it, it was an issue. Now I reached out to Dell and they said they'd fixed it. They claimed they had fixed this rattling trackpad or this quality control issue that was causing these trackpads to have problems. This year, it's, it, it rattles. So this is just one retail unit. Now I don't know if this is like a very small sample size of one, but the fact is this is a product. This is a feature on a product that's been around for a year. It's a problem that's existed for a year and it still remains an issue. Now here's the thing, this is an XPS product. It's their flagship, like top of the line Dell laptop. And these get expensive. These top out of like 35, maybe $4,000. There's clearly an issue to the point where the left clicks, they don't feel like they register properly. These are expensive. This should not be a thing. Dell, fix this, please. Now, the speakers on the side sound good for a Windows laptop. They don't sound as good as like a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but they get loud and they're quite clear. It's more the vibration. If you have the volume at about 65 or 70% or louder and you're typing on it, you'll feel like the vibrations just running through the base of the laptop, which I don't think is a particularly enjoyable experience, but they do sound quite nice. Now in terms of performance, the XPS products of the past have often had performance that was quite spiky. So Dell does this thing where they run their systems aggressively. It clocks fast, it runs hot, and then they drop down the clock speed and then they repeat it back up. So you'd have these kind of performance charts that would be spiky. But when you're doing work, it's perfectly fine, right? Because you're not running your system full tilt for hours on end. If you're doing like video work or 3D work or any kind of CPU slash GPU intensive stuff, it's never 100% full load the full time, unless you're doing a render. But even then, these systems could handle it reasonably well. It was an issue 
when it came to playing games. And I think for people that purchased these systems with the intent of playing games because they had powerful gaming grade hardware, people would be disappointed, right? That is no longer the case. On this particular system, this XPS 17 this year has very steady frame rates and clock speeds. It's much better. It's better with benchmarks, better in games, better with video edits, better with 3D work. It's just a better overall system. It does still run hot. It's just the nature of a thin and elegant looking system like this and an Intel chip in there. It's gonna run hot, but it's got consistent performance. And that is honestly, I think all you can ask for when it comes to a product like this. Now, there's still no official undervolting built into the XPS 17. There's some third-party routes you can use to get there. I've tested it, it does work, but the responsible thing for me to say would be that it works, it's just that you use it at your own risk in terms of the undervolting on these new devices. The other thing is if you're looking at this and you're contemplating between the i7 and the i9, don't get the i9. It, the, the thermal capabilities of this chassis are already stretched to its limit with the i7. So don't get the i9. Okay, the ports. So just real quickly to wrap this, uh, it hasn't changed from last year. Well, physically they haven't changed. There's four USB-C, but they now support Thunderbolt 4. And there's also a SD card reader, just like last year's model. But it's a nice selection of ports. If you are someone who's comfortable with dongles, they do include one in the box. But if you're a USB-A user, you gotta dongle up. So inside this has got the same upgradable RAM and the two SSD slots. It's got the same battery size, same battery life at seven hours and the same 130 watt USB-C charger. Now last year's XPS 17 had an issue where some devices while they were plugged up would drain battery. Like if you had a high-end configuration, some units, if you had it plugged up to a wall would still deplete in battery life. Now I couldn't replicate that on my system. And this was a fully spec'd out unit as well with the 4K panel, I couldn't get it to do it, no matter what benchmark or what game I played. So it definitely didn't affect every unit, but it was apparently an issue. Dell has said that they fixed it this year, but again, I tried to do it on this thing. I couldn't replicate it. There's no kind of battery drain issues, but I can only report what I'm seeing. Okay, so I think that wraps up this video. I would say, I'm just gonna leave you off with two thoughts. Number one, this XPS 17 is the best XPS product I've seen to date. But the last thing I wanna bring up is the lack of AMD options. In this particular device, AMD would excel, like truly excel. AMD's chips right now, especially the 5000 series, they do really well in these like thin and light applications because they're less energy consumptive, they have better thermal characteristics, they're just really good. And to see an AMD chip in here would have been a dream but, well, okay, there's Thunderbolt 4, but that could be worked around, okay? The reason I even bring this up in this particular video is that I did a little research, and it turns out Intel, as a company, their number one customer, the customer that buys the most Intel chips every year, <laughs> is Dell. So Dell has this amazing working relationship with Intel, right? And I'm sure that Dell gets the best pricing of all the laptop and computer manufacturers out there because they just buy so many chips from Intel. So I have this feeling that when it comes to a product like this, there is some kind of brand relationship that Dell is trying to preserve to make this thing not have AMD. I'm convinced of it because it doesn't make sense otherwise. This would be a stunning product for AMD to be inside. But we don't have it yet. Maybe ever, or maybe for a really long time. But that's the XPS 17. It's a good pickup this year, but if, if you get that trackpad and it's wonky, send that back.